is a Poisson mu. Uh, suppose that n equals n um, random variable x follows a binomial np distribution. Uh, the expectation of x is, well, so n is Poisson mu, and x given n is n is binomial np. So we know that the expectation of x given n is n is np. So if we make n just a random variable, then the expectation would be capital NP. And the expectation of that random variable would be the expectation of capital NP is mu P because n is Poisson and its expectation is mu. So we get mu P, which is none of the above. Uh, a similar one here where n is geometric um, all the steps follow, except now the expectation of n is 1 over p. So we get 1 over p times p is 1. Uh, properties of a conditional expectation. So say that we have y plus z given x is x. So that's the same as y given x is x plus z given x is x. And so the expectation distributes across those because that's we know that expectation distributes across sums. So, um, so uh, what, for example, is the expectation of x plus z given x is 5? Well, when you see this, you can say, um, well, x is 5. Uh, so the expectation of 5 plus z would be just 5 plus expectation of z given x is 5. Uh, more generally, the expectation of x plus y given x is the expectation of x given x plus expectation of y given x and expectation of x given x. Uh, when you say given x, that means x becomes a constant. So the expectation of x given x is just x itself. So here we have a list of properties, the first one being the um, law of iterated expectation, and the rest are just equality of random variables, uh, of which we did number three, uh, but you can verify all the other ones pretty straightforward. So now we're going to start section 6.3 on conditional density. So A is an event, and X is a discrete random variable, so we have Bayes' rule as, as usual. Now, if x is continuous, to say that the probability that x is x in the denominator there um, is going to be 0. So that's not going to be well defined. So instead, we'll, uh, we'll write probability that a is x in dx. Um, we can write then Bayes' rule, and we'll define the probability that a, um, um, that a given x is x is the limit as the limit of probability of a given that x is in dx as dx goes to zero. So remember, dx has a double meaning. It's a small interval, and it's also um, uh, starting at x. So uh, now if y is continuous, um, and a is the event y is in dy, then the probability that y is in dy given x is x is the limit as dx goes to zero the probability y is in dy x is in dx over probability x is in dx and we can write all these probabilities um, with densities so uh, we get some cancellations of the dx dy's here and so we get the conditional density of y given x is x um, is written so this notation is uh, y given x is x um, we write that under the f and so that's the joint over the marginal the marginal here is a constant um, which allows the um, which allows the uh, the conditional density to integrate to one so we can visualize it as a slice of the joint. So the conditional is a slice of the joint con uh, at x is um, is a, at x is little x, and so the probability that y is in dy given x is x, uh, we can see that as um, the shaded region shown here under under this 
uh, conditional density between y and y plus dy. So here's an example. So let u1 to u10 be iid uh, standard uniform. So I'm throwing 10 darts at the unit interval. x is the min, y is the max. You can verify that the joint is 90y minus x to the eighth and that the marginal is 10 times 1 minus x to the ninth. And so we're asked to find the... Uh, conditional density for x is 0.2. So uh, we just plug x is 0.2 into the joint and in the marginal, and we get 90y minus 0.2 to the 8th over 10 times 0.8 to the 9th. Then I ask you to find the probability that y is greater than 0.7 given that x is 0.2. So I've drawn for you the marginal above, which is of the form y minus 0.2 to the eighth power. Um, here, y takes values between 0.2 and 1 because uh, y has to be bigger than x because uh, x is the min and y is the max. So, um, right, so uh, we can just calculate the joint I mean the the conditional density then so here I'm uh, wait, what am I doing here just a second here oh yes so this is um, so here I'm calculating the probability and um, so I'm just integrating from y is 0.7 to y is 1 and making a u substitution and we get 1 minus 0.5 over 0.8 to the ninth power. Uh, you can check that this is right by using another method. Um, for example, uh, probability that y is greater than 0.7 given that x is 0.2 is 1 minus probability that y is less than 0.7 given x is 0.2. So by Bayes' rule, um, we can write it as a ratio. And the, the numerator here we can show is 0.5 to the ninth power because that's the probability that x is in dx and there are nine darts between 0.2 and 0.7. Uh, the denominator is x is 0.2 with, which is to say that there have to be nine darts between 0.2 and 1 so that's 0.8 to the ninth power. So then we get 1 minus 0.5 over 0.8 to the ninth power, which confirms what we got above. So now we come to the multiplication rule. So in the discrete case, um, we have uh, the joint is equal to what I've written here. This is just Bayes' rule. Um, in the continuous case, uh, I have the analogous um, formula here for densities. And so I have a straightforward example here. If x is gamma 2 lambda conditional is uniform 0x, then we want to find the joint. So the joint um, so is joint is given by the multiplication rule. And the conditional density is 1 over x because uniform 0x has height 1 over x. Um, and of course the density of gamma uh, 2 lambda is lambda squared x e to the minus lambda x. So um, we multiply these together we get lambda squared e to the minus lambda x. Finally the rule of average conditional probabilities. So the discrete case we have our familiar formula probability of a is we're going to condition a on all possible values of x. Um, so here we're summing through all the values of x. Uh, for the continuous case, same formula except we're integrating through all the values of x. And this is called the integral conditional formula. So let's make an example. So say that x is uniform 0, 1. Given x is x, let i1, i2 be iid Bernoulli x. 
So we're flipping a coin, we're flip, flipping an X coin here, and um, A is the event that the first toss is heads. In other words, I1 is 1. So I just want to make a word of caution. So X is continuous and I1 is discrete here. So we're going to write probability I1 given X is X for the conditional probability mass function because I1 is discrete. Um, and we're going to write um, uh, F sub X given I1 is 1 of X for the conditional density of X because X is continuous. So that is confusing. This notation is brutal. Um, so here... Uh, Let's find the probability that I1 is 1, given that X is X. Well, if you're paying attention uh, right away, you re recognize this is just X. We don't need Bayes' rule for this. This is, um, this is a forward probability, forward conditional probability. Um, given that X is X, then we know that um, I1, the chance of having a heads, will be X. Um, this is called a likelihood in Bayesian statistics. So next we want to find the unconditional probability that we get a heads. So here uh, we're going to use the, um, the rule of average conditional probabilities. And we're going to condition on, on x. Uh, so, so a is the event i1 is 1. And the probability that a is um, so the probability of a is using our formula uh, x takes values between 0 and 1 we're integrating all the values of x and um, times the uh, density x is continuous so that's 1 so we get just the integral from 0 to 1 of x dx which is uh, one half. So, interpretation that with no prior info about what the chance of getting heads in heads is, then the probability of getting the probability of getting a heads is a half. Uh, finally, this one's a little bit tricky. So we want to find the posterior density. So this is a conditional density. Uh, at x given i1 is 1. And so um, you may know that the posterior is proportional to the likelihood times the prior, but um, in case you forgot that, I'll re-derive that here. So uh, there's two ways to write the multiplication rule for the joint um, fx i1. Uh, so we can write it um, conditioning on I1, or we can write it conditioning on X. So this is pretty funny looking because um, because we have one discrete and one continuous variable here. But uh, the, the right-hand side of the two equations here are, are equal, so, so we get this equality here, and what we're solving for is the conditional density. So I'm just going to divide both sides by probability I1 is 1. And we get our formula here. Uh, we get our formula here, which is, um, so this basically says posterior um, likelihood. And this is prior and this is a constant. And so we get uh, 2x, right? And so a picture of this, um, before we flip the coin, um, x could be anything between 0 and 1, all equal likely. Um, after we flip a coin and we get heads, then, we're, then um, the, the likelihood of x now is um, it's not uniform anymore. It's going to have density 2x. And um, this is to say that it's much more likely to be close to 1 than it is to be close to 0 because we got a heads already. 
Okay, so uh, just an intro to Bayesian statistics. We'll see you next time.